In the creation of this table, we're going to look at the process that we need to follow for our family. The first thing we want to do is we want to set up and add the reference planes that we need here. So you'll see by default in this template we have a reference plane both in our north, south, and our east, west directions. And those reference planes at the intersection of them, that's actually the insertion point for the table that we're creating. So I'm going to come up here to my Create tab, come down to the Datum panel, and click on Reference Plane. And I'm just going to come up here. Right now it's 3 foot 6, and I'm just going to go ahead and give myself a reference plane in this direction. And I'm going to come down below it. Not as concerned with whether they're both equal distance from this east-west reference plane that we were given by default because I'm going to my next step will be to come up to this modify tab and I'm going to use my align dimension tool and I'm going to give myself a constraint here so you see by default I have four foot four here and three foot six here but we're going to change that to equals and both of these new reference planes that we've created are going to be equal distance from this east-west origin. And I'm going to do the same thing in the other direction. So once again it's up to my create tab reference plane and I'm just going to come out here in this direction and I'm going to give myself another one in this direction. using my align dimension tool again I'm going to come out here to the edge of what will later be the table the center line for my insertion and the center line over here as well click and place this dimension string hit my equals tab once again and these reference planes will both be equal distance away from the origin as well Now I'm just going to take a second and make sure that I stretch my reference plane length to be similar distance. Um, I've developed this as a best practice for myself. What it does is it allows me to be able to just graphically take a look at my reference planes and get a sense of the edges of my table as they're aligned. And Okay, that gives us reference planes that will begin to set up the edges of our table. If we look in our other view, you can see these reference planes set up as well. The next thing I'm going to do for your benefit is to go ahead and I just want to scale up the annotation. So since the annotation is controlled by these view scales, I'm going to come down to 1 8 and just go ahead and change the annotation since we're not going to be printing this view I just want you to be able to see the constraints that we just established now you can see that equals a little bit better that's the constraint now let's go ahead and create a parameter here so we're still using the align dimension and I'm just gonna go ahead and set up what's gonna be our width and up here I'm going to go ahead and give myself a length parameter so right now we just have a dimension if you remember from the conceptual massing videos the next step I'm just going to escape out of my dimension tool select this dimension that we just put in and come to add parameter up here in my options bar I'm going to name this one width I'm going to type that here in the name I'm going to leave this a type parameter. We'll come back to what when we will use an instance parameter later. And I'm going to click OK here. This is a family parameter just for the family that we're creating here. Now you'll see that we know it's a parameter because the name of that parameter is entered before an equal sign and giving us that, that length that we had already put in. So I'm going to go ahead and select 
my length, add parameter. I'm just going to give this the name as well and click OK. Now we have a length and width. Just to confirm that this is now set up properly and operating according to the constraints that we've set up based on our origin, come up here to this properties panel and just select my family types. And now I'm going to go ahead and just flex this. So let's go ahead and change this. Let's bring it down to six feet, six by eight. And I'm just going to click apply and we can actually see here in our window without even closing just how the geometry flexed in every direction to keep these constraints. So this is very important. We want to flex our model as often as we're creating constraints. It just allows us to be able to better navigate and know when along the process we might have made a mistake whether it was in the creation of our constraints or our parameters and when we flex our parameters we'll be able to see exactly how all the reference lines and eventually the geometry that we create how it's all affected by these constraints and parameters I hope this video has been helpful I know that it's very important for us to understand how we set up the geometry that will later be placed it all begins with these reference planes which we will create and turn into work planes in the next video.